Welcome to the weekend. I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. A little later in the program, we're going to be talking forest fires with Gail Norton, the former Secretary of the Interior for the United States. But first, I want to take a look down south at that great recall happening for Senator John Morris. With me is Laura Carno from an organization called I Am Created Equal. First of all, what is I Am Created Equal? I Am Created Equal is an organization I started last year to communicate with people who just don't much like politics, but they don't like being bossed around by their government either. And I am created equal means that I, the citizen, am created equal to the government official. They're not the kings and they're not above us. Right. Let's get into this, into this incredible recall. Yes. If this recall of Senator John Morris is successful, it'll be the first recall in Colorado history of a, of a uh, uh, senator or a legislator. Mm -hmm. That's huge. How many signatures were required? Um, 7,178 were and required. How many were turned into the Secretary of State's office? Over 16,000. All right, more than double. Yes. This is huge, huge. And how long does the Secretary of State have to certify them? Which he has to. There's just. Right, you know. so three weeks um, they have to certify the signatures, and we are right now at the end of two weeks. So All we're right. looking forward to some numbers soon. All right, then something really fun happens. After the end of those three weeks, John Morse gets to make some decisions. He can challenge those signatures, and he's got a couple weeks to do that. But more interestingly, he has five days to make a decision whether or not to step down. And tell me if I've got this part right. Mm -hmm. If he steps down within those five days, then the Democratic uh, Vacancy Committee gets to choose who will replace him. Whereas if he resigns on day six, there's still a special election. It's just not, shall he be recalled, the first question. It's the second question, do you want this person or this person or this person to replace him? Yes, and I'm not an attorney, but that's my understanding right. of how that's written. All right. I, I, I want to ask you first of all, because your organization put in a lot of the money to, to make these signatures happen. A lot of them were paid petitioners, and it, I've, done a lot of, <laughs> I've done a lot of petitioning. Yes. You really can't get a whole lot of things done if you don't have at least some professional help. How much money did your organization put towards this? So was, um, I raised and spent a little bit more than 50000 And you're right on the paid petitioners, especially with the very, very short time frame from when you file a recall to when you have to turn the signatures in, it is very, very difficult to do that with just volunteers who honestly have jobs and they can't really do that um, besides nights and weekends. All right, big question, where did the money come from? Now I've known you for a while yes. and, and I know you're personally wealthy so you probably just wrote the check <laughs> for yourself. yourself. How, where did the money come from? I would love to be in the position to do that but I did not. Um, so as a C4 we don't disclose our donors but I can characterize where the money came from. It's 100% Colorado money. Every penny. Every, pe every, every penny. Every single penny. No, no, no billionaire actually wrote you a check. Is Michael there? Bloomberg didn't give me any money right. for this. Well, um, let me ask you the same mm -hmm. question though. All right. Sure. Yeah, it's local money. Mm -hmm. Is it NRA money? No, zero NRA money. So I'll characterize it as all Colorado, a combination of large and small donors, and no NRA money. I, I want to get into John Morse on this because I think there are a lot of Coloradans that have no idea why there is this, this such a huge fight over this. But this is a national issue. Right. And I thought at first it was going to be an issue of between John Morse and his constituents. And I'm finding that ain't the case. Tell me if I've got this right. This is really a case about Michael Bloomberg versus Colorado. Bloomberg has already, Bloomberg himself has put money into this race. He's done radio ads, he's funded uh, all sorts of issues on, and several of these recall efforts. Um, this, this is of national importance, why? You know, and I think that's an appropriate characterization of Bloomberg against Colorado. In the John Morse situation, Senator Morse was a very moderate Democrat senator. If you looked at his record before 2013, you might not have been able to tell if he was a Democrat or Republican. It was very moderate. He had some police bills, some military bills. He even sponsored in 2007 a CCW reciprocity bill, which is a very pro-gun bill. Let's put that bill. in English. Yes. A concealed weapons permit reciprocity bill, which meant that if somebody had a concealed weapon permit here and they had a similar system in you know, Florida or wherever it was, you didn't have to, if you were traveling, you didn't, you could use your, your 
Correct. Original permit. Correct. So a rather pro gun Very guy. Very pro gun. So and then 2013 happened, and Senator Morse will say there were all these tragedies he needed to respond to. I say Mayor Bloomberg started spending money here, and Senator Morse changed his legislative profile significantly. This guy came onto the Senate floor when pulling one of his awful bills, I mean, or, or even worse than what he had, which made gun manufacturers liable for the crimes that are, are, are committed. And during this, he went on a tantrum and, and started saying of we gun owners that we have a, a sickness in our soul. We have a sickness in our soul. I mean, it was, it was personal. Out of all the people in the state legislature who voted for these, uh, these obscene laws, why John Morse? John Morse is the Senate president. Um, it, he architected not only this legislative agenda, but he also, on the day that seven bills went through two Senate committees in one day, he cut off public process. Knowing, you know, being at the Capitol before, and when you have a, a very emotional bill like civil unions or medical marijuana, they do one bill one day, one committee, so that they can hear from the maximum number of citizens. Some people who drove from, you know, four or five hours away, and so by cramming all of them through, he really cut off public process. Let, let, let me amplify that, uh, because sure. I rarely, matter of fact, I don't think I've ever seen that happen. Usually, even with an emotional bill, abortion bills, gay marriage bills, they, they, take, they take testimony. All, all the sheriffs, all the elected sheriffs, 62 of them, came out against these proposals. About 40 sheriffs actually went down to the Capitol that day. They all wanted their say to explain why these were bad bills, and they weren't given that mm -hmm. because there wasn't time. So instead of having one bill one day, they had five bills mm -hmm. in one day, and they limited testimony. Mm -hmm. So all these people that came in from all corners of the state were sitting there, and they wouldn't be heard. I've never seen that yes. in the Colorado State Legislature. Yeah, and I was one of those people, you know, as an ordinary citizen who didn't like these bills. I wanted to have my say. These are bad for women, and I wanted to provide that provide that perspective. Uh, I ended up doing a video blog the next day called What My Testimony Would Have Been and sent it to the senators on the committee. Um, I'm sure they were happy to get it. Um, but they, so Senator Morse organized all of that. Not only that, the, the day that those bills came to the floor of the Senate, mm -hmm. I was watching very intently. And the opponents, a bipartisan group of opponents, um, did a great job of filibustering it largely Democrat, almost all, all the rest, the only, the only partisan part about this were, were the proponents. Mm -hmm. They were all Democrats. Mm -hmm. None of them came to the well mm -hmm. to answer a question, to say why it was important, why it would increase public safety. I've never seen that either. They just came down to the well, moved it, and then for five hours stayed quiet until there was a vote. Mm -hmm. John Morse's idea? Not sure if it was Senator Morse's idea, but having worked at the Capitol for a couple of years, I've never seen that, where the proponents, the bill sponsor, wouldn't come answer a question in defense of their bill. And I was hoping that lots of folks were watching that on the Colorado Channel or online to, to see how, how little regard some elected officials have for us, ordinary citizens. I don't know if you know this, John Morse is term limited. So you're spending a lot of money, and all of a sudden people are upset because you're going to be spending government money when it comes to a recall uh, effort for a guy who only has one more legislative session. Um, why was this the guy to do this to, and, and why not focus on Evie Hudak, who said to a rape victim that the statistics aren't in your favor, uh, saying to Amanda Collins, in essence, you're lucky you didn't have that gun uh, with you, otherwise the man who raped you could have killed you mm -hmm. too. Yeah, so, Why not go after her with that money instead? So I'm in El Paso County, and I'm not sure about the statewide discussion about that, but El Paso County wanted to recall its senator. Um, and he's the Senate president who um, architected the legislative agenda. And he's not done. He didn't do everything he wanted to do. And people weren't okay with that. The other interesting thing is this was a little bit about guns, but it was more about when people, his, when his constituents came to him and said, we don't like how you've changed since last year. 
he ignored them. He, he put his fingers in his ears and said, la, 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 I'm not listening Actually, to you. And people were not okay with well, that. Well, he went on record doing that. He was on Rachel Maddow's yes. show. What did he say on that show? Yes. Uh, he said he was going to, what, ignore his constituents? Yeah, she, she asked the question, you know, I bet you're hearing from a lot of these pro-gun pro people. And he said, I tell my senators just not to listen to it. It will make them crazy. And he, he talked about Lincoln not listening to, not reading the press and that kind of thing. So he tried to make it a little bit more magnificent unanimous than it was, but what his constituents heard and what I think he meant was, it doesn't matter what you say, I'm going to vote this way anyways, tough luck. Denver Post says that this is a, the wrong use of the recall, that the recall is supposed to be there for, for somebody who did a crime, not somebody who, who voted a way you didn't like. That's why we have normal elections mm -hmm. to get rid of them. Okay, the Denver Post is not it. Right. <laughs> because. Um, yeah. So the constituents have a legal right to do this for the reasons that they choose. The reasons that they are choosing here is you're not the guy we elected. We elected this guy with a very moderate uh, uh, voting record, bill record. And all of a sudden, when New York money came in, you changed your tune. Not okay with that. We hired you. We can fire you. So this was a woman's issue. Now, help me out with that. Sure. And I, I understand, particularly when it came to the concealed carry ban, why that was such a strong uh, issue for women. Why this magazine limit, uh, which, by the way, is completely unworkable. Even the governor yes. said it's unworkable, but he signed it anyway. Uh, why, why is this a woman's issue? Yeah, so the magazine limitation was one of the things that really irked me the most. And I, even before this recall, by the way, my organization ran ads when Bloomberg started running ads. I'm just a little fish, but I thought somebody needed to respond to him. And the terminology I used in, in that ad was, um, how many bullets does it take to defend me against a rapist? One bullet, five bullets, 10 bullets? How about enough to stop the rape? And, and the point is, is, I'm smaller than my assailant, statistically. Most men are bigger than most women. And I don't know if I'm gonna have one assailant, two assailants. Um, I live out in the country. Um, my neighbors can't hear anything that's going on. They may or may not even hear gunfire. So I'm on my own, and, and as a woman who's independent, I choose and have for decades chosen a firearm for self-defense. What I'm hearing is my body, my gun, my choice. Yes. Would that be a good way to put yes. it? Yes, and I, I tweeted the governor during that whole, uh, whole period of time, I'm pro-choice on self-defense. If guns aren't for you, don't own one. I'm not requiring people to own guns, but don't tell me not to. Assuming John Morse stays in and doesn't get out, and I'm hoping that's the case, by the way, what do you think the, sh the chances are of a... Um, of him being ousted be the first in Colorado history? I think the chances are good. Um, I did some polling also through my organization and 58% of people thought that these gun bills went too far. And, um, and this was a little earlier on when not everybody mm -hmm. knew about the recall, um, but after knowing about some of the gun issues, the majority thought that he should be recalled. So People want to get more information, where do they go? They can go to IamCreatedEqual.com. IamCreatedEqual.com. Laura, thank you so much. Stick around.